Hello, there's some volume. We're good. I'm back. You're back. We're back together. Isn't it great to be back? I bet you thought I was away. I bet that you thought that you would have gotten the bearded thinker. Instead, you get the clean shaven board cart. Um, we're going to wait for a few people to, to get on. We'll be doing Genesis 11. What a great day today's going to be. I hope that you and yours are doing spectacular. Hello, friends, Gene, Linda Kimmel, Mike, Colonel, Terry Lynn, good to see you, Jennifer, Judy. Almost there, and boom. Hi, Mike. Good to see you. Steve, Elizabeth, good to see you. Good morning, Cindy, Bobby, Joe. Well, good afternoon. Uh, Maggie, good to see you. Carol, ah, oh, look, the gang's all here. I feel so happy Tuesday to you, Erica. Ah, oh, we're all here. We should be rocking this now. Sue, good to see you. Where's Thor? Come here, boy. Come, come. Come on. In your bed. Jump in. Jump. Ooh, there's a squeak toy in your bed, bud. There's the great and mighty Thor. All right. Let's rock and roll this, shall we? Here, bud. Two churches. That's the story. That's the story today. Let's see if I can make this. There we go. A little bit lower. And we're good. All right. So the story of two churches. The church of, of um, of Cain, the world. The church of sinners the church of um the church of 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 exposing nakedness the church of of showing sin um the church of ham and canaan and the church of shim which is the church of Seth and Noah, of, 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 of Adam, um, Abel for his short life. And so um, when we come to chapter 11, we're going to see that the world hasn't changed. Folks are still, um, they're still full of sin and death. Everything they do is evil all the time. Um, hey, there's Finker. Props to Finker for an outstanding two days of Bible study, both Thursday and and um, and Monday. He was spectacular, and I am well rested and ready to be your Bible study guide through the fun, which is um, we're going to babble our way through this section. Do you see what I did there? Ah. And all the whole world had one um, uh, there was one lip and they all had the same words uh, tongues, language, lips um, uh, Hello Donald, good to see you um, Tongues, language, lips uh, the Greek, the, the, the Hebrew word is lips um, uh Safa, um, because 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 your because your lips are moving, 
and you and you understand what somebody says or your lips are moving and they don't understand what you say. And the people migrated from the east. They found a plain in the land of Sinar and they settled there. And they said one to another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. Uh, Luther says that perhaps they um, they had a uh, new means of, of constructing bricks that were different than before. Um, and they made brick for stone and bitumen for martyr. Or um, this word is, is sort of... Um, uh, um, like asphalt okay so they're 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 gonna they're gonna slap some stuff on on this and uh oh, there it is asphalt um and make the make the bricks stick together so they can so they can build a town okay and they said let us um uh, build up a town. I, I don't think city is really, really good here. I think town is better. Because when you think city, you think the city. My kind of town Chicago is. Are we eating our... Oh, we're under stress. We're eating our... We shouldn't be doing that, buddy. We should let those go. Come on. Let those go. Leave them alone. You want to go get me a squeak toy? Anything other than eating your paws, buddy. We're having some um, allergies, and they 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 manifest themselves um, in the uh, 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 in in licking his paws. He licks them until they're raw. Um, they come. They had brick for stone and bitumen for water for martyr, asphalt for martyr. And when and when they. When they said, so then they said, uh, uh, let's let's make uh, let's build for ourselves a city and a tower. Um, <laughs> and the and the and the and the top of it will um, let us make for ourselves a name. Um, so they, they want to make a name for themselves because you see when God is your God, then you are, you don't have to make a name for yourself. You get your name from him. When, when the Lord is the one who saves you, um, um, yeah, city's fine as as long as you as long as you don't sort of picture it as like three million people. Um, thinker as thinker's right. I mean there there is a word for town. Um, uh, I I just think that we 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 should we should sort of um, think this through in terms of. Um, I'm gonna do this. Oh, that's so much better. Let's do this. Let's have some fun here, shall we? Um, so they, they, they want to make for themselves a... Um, and we're suddenly in Proverbs. Woo! Uh, they want to make for themselves a name. That's the deal. Whether, whether you translate it as town or or city, they, they want to make themselves... A, a, they want to make themselves a name because, they, because God is not their God. Um, with God not their God, then, then they're on their own. And with them on their own, it means that 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 they have to make a name for themselves. They have to be something for God to love them, and that and that is just a, a hot mess. That is just a hot mess, um, because again, when God's the one that's determining your identity, when the Lord is the one that's determining your identity, you don't need to make an identity for yourself. You don't need to. Um, uh, to self-identify as a as a rock star, um, you just don't. Um, uh, if but if but but if you are on your own, well then you definitely need that, and that's what's happening here. Um, they. Um, 
Um, so I like the note here, which explains Finker's comment until, until now, all events that have been consistently identified with the East. Now Nora's early descendants journey down the Tigris Euphrates Valley of Mesopotamia. So everything's been happening in the East. Um, and that's what's going on here. The tower that they want to do, um, they want its head to be in the heavens. They're going to make themselves big. So you want to be big. You want to be known. You want to be the top spot. Um, and so they're going to make for themselves a name. Okay. And, and that tower is going to go up into the heavens. And they're going to be a name. They're going to be a name um, for themselves. So that they're not dispersed over the face of all the Hararits. So they're not dispersed over the face of the whole earth. This is idolatry in its truest sense. Um, they want to be their own God. They despise the Lord's words and promises. He's not going to speak for them. Their works, their monuments, their statues, their towers are going to speak for themselves. And there's nothing, uh, there's no today connection to this. I'm just simply saying that that their their plan was to be big on their own. As opposed to, as Pastor Finker points out here, he's in the zone. Um, is that um would you your name in Hebrew is your fame. And so the idea that that they're going to make a name for themselves is that they're going to make fame for themselves. They're going to be somebody. Hey buddy. I think people know that you're there. There you are. Make no mistake about it, though. Building a tower is not a sin, but wanting to make a name for yourself, that's a sin. Wanting to be great, eh, not a sin. Making that all by yourself, oh, that's a big problem. Always climbing for their own glory. You got it, Will Robinson. Danger, Robinson family. Sorry. Verse 5. And the Lord, Yahweh, came down to see the town, the city, and the tower, which the children of men built. Children of the Adam built. Anthro. So, um... This, this is spectacular. What I love about this is, is the spectacularness of he comes down. And you should take this as, at, not as he didn't know what was going on, but that he decided to deal with it. Okay? We take that period of time in between sin and our repentance as we got away with it. That we got away with what was going on. That we that God didn't notice it. We do what we do because we act like there's no God. This is Luther. Off your tooth there, buddy. Um, and so, while we're doing what we're doing, acting like there's no God, we have this, this period of time where we think God's dead. We're just not going to get to it, get to it, or that we're going to, um, we're going to get away with it. So we live and act as if there is no God, or at least no God that's going to call us out for our sins. And this, this is just the way we are. This is the sickness that is us. And we have the same sickness that they have building their tower. When they started their tower, before they even started their tower, while they were thinking about making, thinking about, thinking about their tower, he knew what was going on. Before they built a single brick, he knew what was going on. So what does he do? He waits. He's patient with them. He is long suffering with them. He, um, he is, he is, uh, um, he is, uh, is long-suffering. Luther says 
that this is part of God's long suffering, that he waits to punish evil. I, I just love it. I just, and you should love this too, because, because this is just spectacular. Um, so when he comes down, he comes down to repent them, to call them out of their sins. But they are living like we live daily and much as if there is no God, or at least no God to call us out of our sins. Would you do the things you do? Would you say the things you say? Would you think the things you think if you believed that there was a God? The answer is no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. And look, I know all of us think that we're good people and that we were in the days of, 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 of the Tower of Babel. They, that we would never do the things that they do. Pew Research did a poll about whether... Um, is it Pew Research? I think it was Pew Research. Um, they did a poll of, of Americans about if you had lived in the South in um, before the Civil War, would you have owned slaves? Would you have been supportive of slaves? And shocking enough, 75% of people were dishonest with themselves. Oh, I would have stood up against that. I would have stood up against that evil. The same occurs when we, we contemplate going back to the cross. We think to ourselves, um, if I were to go back, if were you there when they crucified the Lord? Well, if I was there, I would have been like, get, I would like, I'm going to fight for you, Jesus. I'm going to, I'm going to protect you, Jesus. Um, if anybody's on your team, I am. If I have to die for you, wait a minute. Wait, wait a, wait a minute there. That was said. All will fall away, but I won't. That was said. So make no mistake about it. If you were there back there in the time of, of the Tower of Babel, you'd have been like, let's make a name for ourselves. Uh, Bishop would have been like, let's slap a Blackhawks symbol on this big giant tower. We'd have sound the referendum for building that tower. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, I mean, again, the sin is that we don't look at ourselves as evil. And so we don't have sin to repent of. Um... I mean, we have better than perfect vision. That's perfect. Hindsight is 2020 or 2010 if you have better than perfect vision. That's me. Like, better than perfect vision. And when I picture myself in the past, I picture myself as one of the greatest people of all time. When in actuality, I'm an icky, 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 icky person. I'm icky. To the core. And the sooner that I admit that at Babel, I would have been building myself a name at the cross, I would have been screaming for him to come down from the cross and show me that he's actually Savior. At Gethsemane, I would have fled. And yes, Will, it's speck versus log. We are all blind guides. We all put on these sunglasses. Hey, you know what? If you're... um. If your optometrist came out and they had shades on, if your optometrist had shades on like this, if your optometrist had shades on, then um, uh, what would you do? I mean, seriously, would you, would you be like, oh yeah, yeah, do surgery on me right now, please. I've got this speck right in my eye. Please do that. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. Instead, you would be like, um, you'd be like, get away from me. You have big giant specks on in your eye. Babel, that's us. Get used to it. That's us. That's us. That's the way we roll. That's the way we roll. That's us. That's our sin.
let's go back. So he goes down to repent them. That's what he does. He goes down to repent them. He goes down to repent them. That's what he does. That's what he does. He goes to repent them. And just think about that. Just, just, just let your mind dwell on that reality. That God is so gracious and merciful as to repent us. As to call us out of our sin. As to, as to be such a God as to rescue us from our sins. That's what he does. That's the kind of God he is. Um, you okay there, bud? Scratching your back? Okay. Okay. All right, let's keep going. The Lord said, and this is Yahweh. This is Jesus. Behold, they are one people. And they all have one, one lips, one tongue. All, one language. That's what they got. They got one language going on. Okay, all of them do. One language, one lips. This is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they will do will be impossible for them. All that they, um, they will not be, um, they will not be uh, left out of anything that they do. Because they're one language. They're one people. This is only the beginning of the evil they will do as one language, one people. Let's go down and confuse their language. So that they may not have one speech. One tongue. Let us go down and uh, this word. Um, so let's go down and, and let's um, mix. Mix up their language. Mix up their, their lips. Their lips now. Um, their lips are going to be. Their lips are going to be confused. So that they don't understand. Uh, the lips of one another. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's, 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 um, that's, that's the, that's the deal. They're, they're not going to understand. It's, it's, it's not my birthday, Brian. Uh, what anniversary are you talking about? Um, I'm assuming you're not talking to me, so maybe you're talking to, but the, um, uh, uh, let's go down there and do that. Let's, do you, do you see the, I beat finger to it. Do you see the plural there? Again, God referred to himself in the plural. Um, Terry Lynn, I do not understand your, your question. Um, I've never really understood why that would have been so. Um, that they could do anything, Terry Lynn, or that they, um, or that nothing's impossible for them. So Yahweh's having this conversation with himself. And, and I think you should, with Luther, take this as a... Um, you should take this as a... Um, oh, my ordination. Well, thank you, Brian. Um, that's on Thursday. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, the, um, I, oh, mixing language makes 
everything not possible for them, Terry Lynn. Um, so as long as they can work together, as long as they can converse together, as long as they can understand each other, they can do anything. Um, it's that he goes and, and, he, and he mixes their, their lips up so that one person can't understand the other person's lips. Then it becomes a problem that they can't do anything they want. So he sets them back at least 2,000 years. He sets them back at least 2,000 years. And he doesn't just, um, and Terry Lynn, he doesn't just scatter their language, but he also scatters them personally and thus divides them into, well, we're seeing some of those problems today, into clans and groups and social groups and the like, cultures. Um, this is Babel's fault because of Babel, not because of God. So the Lord di uh, diasporad them um, is the is the Septuagint? He um, he goes and he um, disperses them over the face of the earth, and with them with them unable to understand each other, and ununderstand um, and no longer together, uh, they leave their building and they're going. Um, to the to be the the, the top. Um, I'm going to read Finker's quote here. Even in church history, there was a disagreement between the East and the West over the Trinity because of the misunderstanding between Greek and Latin. There, are, what's the first problem in the early church? Gentile versus Jew. What are some of the issues that we have today that divide us? Race, gender, um, all of this is compounded by um, our sin. And I want to go to sort of say, what's the fix for this? The fix for this is not that they became better people. It's that God sent his son to save them and then sent the spirit. The gospel lesson, that go, the, the, the day that this re that reading is read, is um, this reading is generally read on Pentecost where the undoing of this is none other than the, um, the un this is undone. Um, this is undone at the, uh, when the spirit comes, when the spirit comes. Therefore, get to nine and so therefore they called um the, the, thus they called the the name of the place babel because the lord um he belowed he he dispersed yahweh dispersed their um their uh their tongues their lips over all the earth um and from there, the Lord um, dispersed. Uh, he confused their tongues and he dispersed over the face of them for over the face of all the earth. So um, this is that battle between the church of Noah and Shem and the world. Uh, the world wants to make a name for themselves. They want to make themselves big. They want to do uh, important things. They want to be important people. They want to be um, they want to be heroes. Um, they they want to be all of that. Um, 
the father wants to save um, this is Luther for we hear that after the division of languages not only governments and the affairs of the home but also the church was thrown into disorder in various ways and so lest we suppose that Satan had been allowed to remove the sunlight of the word utterly from the world and to suppress the church the generation of the holy fathers is set before us to show us that by mercy of God, the remnants were preserved and the church was not completely wiped out. And so what follows is this list of follows, of uh, this list of, of, of genealogy. And I thought I had avoided all the hard names yesterday and given the heavy lifting, lifting to Finker, but I was wrong, you see. Um, and so which you should listen to the next bit as, don't look at the next bit as another list of names. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Instead, look at this as the preserving of the word through the generations until Abraham. That's the way you should read this next section, that God preserves his church in the midst of, of, just the crazies, just the crazies of a language differences of, of, of people and tribes separated the, the, the evil that they want to do. And they're just not capable of doing all of that. He disperses it over the face of the earth. First, got to handle a problem. That's a little one. It's not a big deal. Um, Let's take a look at it. These are the um, the generations, the Toledoth of Shem. When Shem was a hundred years old, he father, followed um, Arpachshad two years after the flood. Now, um, if you remember, we've got this situation where um, uh Um, Archie, that's what we'll call him for short, um, is the third son in the list of Shim's sons, but yet he's born the second year after the flood. Now, um, rather than lose sleep over something that has absolutely nothing to do with your salvation, um, there are many ways to look at this. And you could take this as um, not counting the year right after the flood, and that ends up with giving them three years. You could take this as there were twin. Two of those kids were twins, and the Lord just doesn't um, choose to tell us. But what you need to do is take this section with the um, the with, with what being important um, is that is that God. Um, in the previous section, this is Luther. Previously, Moses used the sentence to clarify after the emphasis, the example of the resurrection of the future life, which God exhibited in to the first world in the person of Enoch. So this genealogy is different from the previous genealogy in what is missing is, and he died. All those and he died business of the previous genealogy was to emphasize Enoch raising either from the dead or his eternal life sort of when he walked with God and God took him. Um, so the first thing to take note of is, is that, um, is that what's missing from the genealogy. Before you handle the fact that Archie is born two years after um, the flood, I, I, would, I would take the note that that there is no and he died because there's a different emphasis here. The emphasis here is, is the per perseverance of the church. The emphasis previously was uh, the belief in that God was going to save his people. He, and we saw that in Enoch. Um, I personally believe that either there were twins 
or uh, this is counting, but Luther concludes that scripture cannot err. And so some things are just not in our, um, they're just not for us to understand, um, which I think is great. So when you run up against something that you don't understand with the scriptures, it's not the scriptures that are wrong. It's you that's wrong. Okay. So um, that's what's important here. That's what you should think is important here. And so as we sort of read this, this uh, genealogy, um, Shem, 100 years old, he follows, follow, uh, um, he fathered Arpashad two years after the flood. I should have called him Arfi instead of um, Arpi instead of Archie. My bad. Shem lived after he had followed um, Arpi 500 years and had other sons and daughters. When Arpakshad had lived 35 years, he followed Shelah. Arpakshad lived after he followed Shelah 403 years and had other sons and daughters. When Shelah had lived 30 years, he followed Eber. Um, now, Eber, um, Hebrew, crossing over. Um, uh, as in crossing over. Hebrews. So uh, Father Eber, um, Hebrew, um, we're on the right track now, aren't we? We are not on the line of death. We are on the line that leads to life. The perseverance of the church. And there's something cool that's going to happen coming up. Um, Shalah, Shalah lived after he followed Eber 403 years. And had other sons and daughters. Eber lived 34 years and he followed Peleg. Peleg had one short leg. Never mind. Uh, Eber lived after he followed Peleg 403 years. And had other sons and daughters. Peleg lived 30 years and he followed Reu. Regu was known for his spaghetti sauce. They all thought it was ragu good um anyway i'm just making that up uh reu lived 209 years with many other sons and daughters after he followed peleg lived um 209 years after he followed fathered reu reu lived 32 years and he followed sarug sarug sounds like a vulcan name but it's actually hebrew when reu lived 32 years he followed sarug and not funny really really not funny he was a pirate. Thank you, Jason. Reu lived and he followed Father Serug another 207 years. The big deal here is the perseverance of the church over against the world. Serug lived after he followed Nahor 200, and, 200 years and he had other sons and daughters. Nahor lived 29 years and he followed Terah. He followed Terah. Terah Nahor lived after he followed Torah 119 years. Oh, there, there, do you notice something going on here? 200, 207. Let's let's just do a little let's just do a little number here. 500, 403, 430. Eh, hiccup. 209, 207, 200, 119. Do you notice something? And Terah lived 70 before he followed, ab fathered Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. Notice that those years are going down. The years are going down. Okay? So the, the number of years is decreasing. But, 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 the important thing here is what's the, um, there was something that, uh, Luther did the, um, the math on it. Let me, let me look, let me look, let me look and find it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, ah, it is true that the time of Abraham, many patriarchs were still alive for Abraham was 50, 
eight years old when Noah died, while Shem survived Abraham by 31 years, and some of his ancestors were alive after him. Nevertheless, it is correct for us to say that with Abraham, a new world and a new church began. For with Abraham, God begins once more to separate his church from all the nations. And he adds a very clear promise concerning Christ, who was to bless all nations. So what, you, what, what, is, what is so very important to remember here is, is just because we move on from someone in the genealogy doesn't mean they disappear. Can you imagine? Abraham talked to Noah. Or could have. And Luther has Shem preaching to Abraham. So in this time in which everyone is separated, in this time where everyone is pulled apart and their tongues are scattered, God preserves his church through the line of his son. Noah, that the, 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 the sun is going down on Noah's life during Abraham's life. And Shem outlives him, outlives Abraham. That is so cool. Now, these are the Toledoth of Torah. New section, new section. Very, very, very important. Terah fathered Abraham, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran fathered Lot, fathered Lot. So Lot must be important. We're going to catch him later. Haran died in the presence of his father, Terah, in the land of his kindred in Ur of the Chaldeans. Now, um, this is actually something to ponder. Joshua says, Joshua says that Abraham was an idol worshiper. And Luther takes this section as um, Ur of the Chaldeans is not only a geological reference to where Abram was living, but also um, a signal to who he was worshiping. That Abram wasn't worshiping Yahweh. He wasn't. Um, and Luther goes on to this, this little bit of, 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 of sort of chastising the Jewish scholars for making the um, patriarchs almost walk on water when that's kind of what Luther does a lot um, in his sort of when he talks, he won't say bad things about the patriarchs. Noah is the most righteous man to live up to this point. And um, geographical, not geological. Hmm. Newman. Um, nevertheless, what I would what I would sort of um, take from this is this is so bad of a situation now. This is so bad. That the church is hanging by a thread here with Abram. That Abram, who's in the line, who's God's going to pick to father many nations, is actually currently on the other team. Just think about that. Take that in for a second. He is on the other team. And how much will that magnify the grace and the mercy of the God who saved Abraham and then blessed all of us in Abraham? Abraham and Nahar took Nahor took wives. That's literally what the, the Hebrew says. They took wives. Like, took wives. Name of Abram's wife. Abram's wife was 
Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, was the daughter of Haran and the father of Milcah and Iscah. Which, um, I think that makes him a half sister. That's okay. The Targaryens do that sort of thing. No, not the children of Israel, though. And later on, um, later on, this will be uh, outlawed in Leviticus. And then there's a lot of bit from here uh, in which uh, Luther tries to make it so that Sarah's not related to Abram. I, I don't really care. And you shouldn't either. Um, the important thing is to note verse 30. And Sarah, Sarah was, um, she's barren. And she had no child. That's the big deal. Don't don't get wrapped up in Sarah's in, in ancestry and trying to prove that that while um, while uh, Nahor is married to Milka and Milka's his half sister, that Abraham didn't do the same thing. Don't don't do that. Um, that's that's equally as unhelpful as trying to trying to make her your his sister so that he's not a liar later on. Just take Abram, Abram as a sinner. Right now, um, he's actually worshiping other gods, and so like that you would impose on him the um, the the rules. That's not going to help. Okay. Uh, Terah took Abram his son, and Lot um, the son of Haran his grandson, and Sarah his daughter-in-law his son Abram's wife, and went together from Ur of the Chaldeans to go into the land of Canaan. Uh, but when they came to Haran, they settled there. And the days of Terah were 205, and Terah died in Haran. So um, uh, that's the end of Abram's dad and brings us to chapter 12. And a couple of things. One, God is going to save his people, save all of us, through this man, Abram, who is just a hot mess. Okay? That's the first thing I want you to remember. The second thing is that God is preserving his word through the long lives of the patriarchs, Shem included. And we're going to get to that in the next chapter. And third, um, this is solely working by grace because everybody in this story, everyone in this account is full of evil to the core. And every thought that they have and every plan that they make is full of evil to the core. Don't miss that. So tomorrow we're going to do chapter 12. But I want also you to take note of the Higher Things app. Go to um, your favorite store, Apple or Google Play or um, Amazon, and grab the Higher Things app. You will get all this premium content for now um, right off the Higher Things website, right onto your phone. The, the, re the reflections, the videos, the whole lot. Um, this video, later on, posted on YouTube. You don't have to wait for it to show up on YouTube because it's going to show up in your phone. So uh, let that be a gift to you um, and part of the hard work that the Higher Things staff has done. And tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about the Higher Things um, virtual conference, which will be happening in August. Have a great day. Thank you for coming. And I will see you with Father Abraham tomorrow. When's the new gear coming out? I'll get that answer tomorrow, Jason. Have a great day.